Anybody recognize this uh, view? How about that one? Do you notice anything in that? There's a couple of paintings in there. And those paintings are by the, by the artist I'm going to be speaking of. Ernestine Parsons is more than the artist you didn't know you knew. So who was Ernestine Parsons? She was a student. She was a teacher. She was a suffragette. And she was an artist, which may be why some of you have not heard of her unless you happen to attend some of her classes. She was born in Boonville, Missouri in 1884. And Boonville was named after two of Daniel Boone's ten, two sons. I think he had something like 10 children. So there's a lot of his relatives floating around this country. As a student, she attended the schools in Boonville, as far as I can tell. I'm still trying to verify that. But if you believe the 1897 writing up about Boonville, Cooper County, Missouri, they had great schools. She then came to Colorado with her mother and her sister, and I know nothing of her father. I can't find him anywhere other than she's, her mother says she was married to William J. Parsons, but there's a lot of William J. Parsons out there. <laughs> Um, when she first st attended Colorado College, she was um, listed as living in Canyon City. But by her sophomore year, they have her at 825 North Weber. This is from her junior year. And I love what they said about her. Just as long as you don't say, I'm calm and dignified. And I think that, that may have something to do with her personality. By her senior year, had, had become involved in the events of the college. There wasn't much about her in the yearbooks prior to that, but her senior year. She also was a student at Columbia University. She got her master's there. She went to the Broadmoor Art Academy and studied, studied under Randall Davey. And at the Fine Arts Center Art Academy, she studied, studied with Boardman Robinson. And she was an art, she studied at the Art Student League of New York. This is her senior graduation picture in the uh, Colorado College yearbook. As you can see, she was involved in everything but art, which I think is very interesting. Um, her degree was in history. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure that what they said about her as her having a calm demeanor is necessarily true, although most photos show her very stern. This is a picture of her as a teacher. According to the District 11, she started at the Ivy Wild School teaching fourth and seventh grade, and then she moved to the Colorado Springs High School where she taught history for about seven years, and then she moved and started teaching social science. This is a picture of her in the 1950 yearbook of the Terror Trails. And this is where she is getting ready to retire. And by 1950, she had retired. And as you can see, I will let you read what it says. She was actually um, fairly well liked, I believe. One of the things that she did when she was at the Colorado Springs High School was she was a sponsor for the, I call it the Triple V Club. Vinny, Vici, Vidi, I came, I saw, I conquered, sorry. Which was the organization for the black students in Palmer High School. They would meet in her room they would talk about the issues they were having. Uh, they would plan their, their community events. And she was a sponsor for that particular group for a number of years. 
She also, in 1938, started a class which focused on the fine arts. Um, and let's see, it's a little dark. Now let's take it, this is from the yearbook in 1938. Now let's take a look at Miss, Parson, Miss E. Parsons' fine arts history class, which was started for the purpose of introducing the students to the, the essentials of the fine arts, music, painting, poetry, and others, and how it applied to their lives. That is the first time I ever have any mention of her in her teaching as becoming involved and in teaching the art, teaching art. Although as an artist, she was one of the early uh, Broadmoor Art Academy students. As a suffragette, and there are those who can speak much more clearly about that than I can, in the 1920s, she was the president of the Colorado chapter of the National Women's Party, which was Alice Paul. It was the more, at one point, became the more militant version of the suffrage movement. Uh, they were involved with the sign in front of telling Woodrow Wilson to give the women the right to vote, and very interesting. As a matter of fact, at one point, they came to Colorado Springs. Uh, I think the headline said that they were moving the chapter, chapter from Washington, D.C. to Colorado Springs. And this is a picture of Ernestine when she was the, uh, cha the uh, chairman of the Colorado part, branch. And now we come to the artist. As I said, she studied at the Broadmoor Art Academy. What is interesting, and I took this from Marshall Sprague's Newport and the Rockies, and I bring it up because at one point, Ernestine was on the board for the Fine Arts Center that he is talking about. And you talked about earlier about Queen Palmer being a patron of the arts. By 1919, Julie Penrose and some of the others became the patrons of the art and the Broadmoor Art Academy. It was started in 1919, as far as I can tell. And by 1920, Randall Davey came to teach, and they made mention of the fact that he was being paid $800 a month to teach at the Broadmoor Art Academy, which Julie Penrose had donated their, her home, which had a swimming pool, a garden, and so on and so forth, at 30 West Dale to house the Art Academy. And Mr. Sprague, in his lovely telling of this story, mentions that Spencer Penrose was a little disturbed at $800 to be paid to Randall Davey. But when he found out that Davey liked playing polo, all was well. And the, the Broadmoor Art Academy did last for a while. And then, it, of course, it morphed into the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center School, which somewhat morphs into the Bemis Art School that we have today. We've always had the arts. This painting by Ernestine is also in that same area of the uh, Penrose Carnegie section. And as an artist, she had showings at the, she was in, she had showings, she was a member of the Fine Arts Guild, and she was had a memorial at the Fine Arts Center. She's been called a, a modernist landscape artist, an abstract, abstract realist, which is what she called herself. And when she went to New York, she went there twice in 19... I believe it was 1938, she studied, I just lost, just lost that piece of, there we go. She studied under Henry Wickley, Wickey, who was 
rather well known during the 1930s. And then in 1933, she was back and she studied with, studied with Richard Leahy, who was involved in the painting competition um, for the Olympics. This, I think, is one of my favorite photos of Ernestine. In almost every other photo that you see of her, she's very somber, she's very stern. This, I think, is the real Ernestine. This is the woman who paints those lovely flowing landscapes. She also focused a lot on the turn of the century homes in the Colorado. A lot of her work is in, takes place in Colorado. However, um, she does have one painting out there of the New York Harbor that is just stunning to me. I happen to love her work. There's a very flowing quality to it. Um, as I'm sure you can see in this painting, it's just, it's very restful to me to see, to see her work. When she was, and during all this time that she was painting, you know, she was also still teaching. She also was involved, of course, in the suffrage movement. She was still studying. I found that she basically kind of studied most of her life. When she went to Columbia University, her master's was in history. Her thesis was how Colorado became a state. As far as I can tell, there's only one copy. There used to be two. They, at one point, there used, according to WorldCat, there was one at the Fine Arts Center. That doesn't exist anymore. The other one is back on the East Coast, and, you can, and I'd have to go back there to read it. As an artist, she also was a member of the Board of Trustees of the Fine Arts Center between 1953 and 1959. She was a charter member of the Colorado Springs Art Guild and at the time of her death was the secretary of that organization. In her lifetime, she had eight one-woman shows, not only showed here, but she showed in Canyon City, she showed on the East Coast, she had a uh, showing, I think, at Carnegie. So this artist that you have probably seen her work around did you even, how many of you have you even had heard of Ernestine Parsons prior to today? One person, one, per, one person, maybe two? To me, she's someone that we need to start looking at. She documented a lot of what she saw that in Colorado, a lot of landscapes and a lot of flowing lines, as if you looked real closely at the others, I s literally challenge you to try to find her work. There are three pieces of her art at the Fine Arts Center, and part of that is at her, in her, at her death in 1967, her collection was given to the Fine Arts Center. Three of them they retained, and you can see them by going on to the Fine Arts Center E-Museum, although I believe at one point the winter scene was, was up this past year, because I went in and saw it. You have the paintings that are at the library. Go online, search up Ernestine Parsons. A lot of her paintings are still for sale. Recently, uh, I think within the last few years, one of them uh, sold for like $1,700. Please, don't forget Ernestine. I don't want her forgotten. I do not want her work forgotten. If anything, my instincts are, and this is my own personal observation, that even though you may not know of her, 
she was was very instrumental in keeping arts alive in this community she would have worked with people like julie penrose the um she was would have been involved with the people building the fine arts center when they were building it she was teaching students she was teaching art to these students the importance of art for her art was her escape but it also was part and parcel of who she was there is so much more to this woman's story 20 minutes is not long enough but if you do not remember any other photo of ernestine think of her here thank you <laughs>